Ladies and gentlemen, Violet Games here. Today we're going to finally be doing the Sith build. It's taken way too long, but a lot of hands have played their part into shaping this build into what it is. I'm really appreciative of my community. Ass kissing out of the way. Let's get started with necessary powers. So first off, I want you to grab Far Reach and go ahead and grab every perk down the left. You can top it off on the right if you want, but we're not going to be using this as a mobility skill at all. We're only going to be using this as a combat skill. So do keep that in mind while you're using this playstyle. This is going to allow us to basically pull enemies in like a force pull from Star Wars. And it's going to be very fun and satisfying when you do it. Though it's not always necessary with this build, as you'll see. It's very strong without it, but... It's just an additional um, tool if you want to use it, especially if you want to pull enemies off vertical points. It's really good for that. Next up, I want you to grab all ranks of Mesmerize. This is more of a role-playing type of thing. It allows you to Jedi mind trick civilians and cause them not to freak out when you start slaughtering a bunch of people. It's really nice to have for that a little bit of immersion. And it's really the only way I can think to use Mesmerize in a way that isn't overpowered. This ability is really silly if you were to use it on its own. After that, I like to grab all ranks of Wind Blast. This is going to be our bread and butter skill. We're going to use this in almost any combat situation. And it just tears people to shreds. It's absurdly strong. The fact that it has a bone charm that makes it stronger is just unnecessary, honestly. Wind Blast at its final rank is like unstoppable. It's ridiculously powerful and doesn't really need a buff, period. And it's going to allow us to force push and force slam people into walls. It's, it's wonderful. After that, let's grab all ranks of strength so we can use our lightsaber sword to smash through doors. Look, I would feel bad if our lightsaber sword could not, you know, smash through doors. So, yeah, that's why we're getting strength, just for the RP. Next up, grabbing vitality so that we can become even tankier and stronger. Pretty sure Jedis can take better hits and Sith alike can take more hits than the average person. And who doesn't love some more health? After that, we're going to grab Reflexes. We're not going to need Snap Reaction or the Focused Slide, I think it's called, but Ad Adept Parry and Superior Deflection. Or, well, is that what it's called? Yeah, I think so. And Superior Deflection are going to help us out a lot. We can deflect bullets. That is definitely canonical to a Star Wars-themed build, so we're going to go with that. After that, we're going to grab Agility. All ranks, because as a Jedi, you can jump, you can flip. You know, all the prequels, you could do that kind of stuff. Not as much in the newer movies, but hey, look. It's fun to have agility. And since we're not going to be using Far Reach as our mobility skill, agility is definitely necessary. After that, I like to glow, go, bleh, I like to glow with, with Bloodthirsty. Now, I used to really dislike Bloodthirsty as a skill because it gave my TV bloody vision and I couldn't really see where I was going and I couldn't really time the... Um, slashes properly but now that I've upgraded to the pro I can actually see perfectly with bloodthirsty and it is a savage skill and it makes you feel like you just tear through enemies constantly it is really really quintessential for an open assault build and I can't tell you how much fun it is once you master this ability after that go ahead and grab all your bone charm crafting perks just so you can craft the bone charms necessary for this build it's going to help you a lot early on and you should be playing this on new game plus anyhow so you can have all the abilities listed on um, the perk list or, or what was this called powers powers list my gosh i'm playing too much far cry after that, we're going to grab Shadow Kill to 2. This is basically just going to dispose of bodies for us. There's no um, canonical reason that I'm having this skill. It just makes it easier for civilians to not freak out after you use Mesmerize. We're only going to grab it to rank 2 because spawning blood flies is not only anti-canon and doesn't really coincide with any Jedi ability, but it can cause a lot of problems <laughs> and kind of steal our thunder. So we don't want to spawn blood flies. It's just not going to help us out in any way. So that really covers it for the necessary powers section. Well, let's move into gear and equipment. Moving into the gear section, it's very basic because we're not going to be using any of the um, equipment, really. We're going to be focusing on our sword, wind blast, and uh, far reach as far as our combat skills go. Or combat equipment goes, really. So... 
you're gonna buy your bone charm slots early on just so you can equip as much buffs as possible take full advantage of the fact that you have all these bone charms collected from your previous playthroughs then we're gonna grab silent running one and two because what is a good sith without being light on his feet yeah you definitely want to be light on your feet and and it's really helpful actually as to not alert everyone in the vicinity right when you run in but a little bit later when everyone starts freaking out it's wonderful i really enjoy it with this build and then after that we're gonna grab sword crossing this is actually just gonna help us get out of those sword locked engagements it doesn't happen frequently with this build because of uh parrying and things of that nature but it's nice to have as a just in case type of thing now for the masterwork upgrades we're going to be grabbing monkey wrench and collector's carapace monkey wrench because monkey wrench essentially allows us to kill clockwork soldiers as if they were any other npc in the game not having to take out their weak points and just focusing on slashing on them is much more like a lightsaber than having to focus on their weak points constantly and it allows us to use bloodthirsty animations on the clockwork soldiers as well which is something i didn't initially no but that is actually a mechanic in the game you can use bloodthirsty in conjunction with monkey wrench to get quick execution on the clockwork soldiers it's really awesome since we're not going to be using any gadgets of any sort to dispatch clockwork soldiers we're going to be using our sword alone and collector's carapace makes you extremely tanky it is a really really high buff and considering that this build really isn't a stealth build exclusively, you can use stealth as a way to ambush your enemies, but I don't recommend using it if you want to get the full effect of being a Sith Lord. So yeah, Collector's Carapace, can't complain there. Time for the Bone Charm segment. Okay, I can't do that. My vocal cords are going to die. <laughs> okay, so from our generic Bone Charms, first off, I like to grab Void Favor. This is going to allow our supernatural powers to potentially consume no mana. This is really effective because the nature of our supernatural powers for this build consume a lot of mana. And sometimes casting Wind Blast without any mana cost is really, really cost effective for the build. After this, grab Whirlwind. Whirlwind as such is just going to increase our overall DPS by increasing our attack speed. That's really all it needs to do. That's all I need to say about it. After this, go ahead and pick up Relocation Sickness. Probably one of the most overpowered bone charms in all honesty f uh, for the enemy AI in the game. In fact, if you don't want to be overpowered, you probably shouldn't pick this one up. Like, witches can sometimes even die from falling from vertical points if they choose to teleport up there to get, try to get a vantage point on you. It's really humorous, and it's just, it's obscene. I don't get why Relocation Sickness is even in the game at some points. <laughs> It's just that powerful. Coming up after that is Vengeance. Now, I've never really used Vengeance, I don't think, in any of my other builds. And, my gosh, guys, Bloodthirsty and Vengeance are probably one of my new favorite, like, combinations. Vengeance basically allows you to tank melee damage, and in return, you accumulate even more adrenaline. You accumulate quite a lot of adrenaline as well, and stacking it on top of the um, mastery effects of Bloodthirsty... It's just really powerful, especially if your character is really strong and has Collector's Carapace. Vengeance is like an absolutely necessary bone charm. You're going to be getting instant kills left and right. After this, grab Falling Star. You can do drop assassinations to restore mana. This is a great way to be in combat and restore mana on the fly as opposed to going into your quick inventory and using a mana potion. Now I understand that if you're running a certain difficulty, going into that wheel freezes time, but I'm going to pretend that you're not a pussy and you freaking <laughs> are playing on the harder difficulties and customize the difficulty to where it's the most punishing. That's really the most rewarding thing to do in Dishonored in my opinion because you are so strong and the enemies around you kind of have trouble dealing with you. So I highly re recommend as a player you just play on the harder difficulties. After this, we have one of my favorite bone charms, Ground Glider. Probably a very, very featured um, piece in all my builds. Uh, again, if you're not into ground gliding kills, probably shouldn't use this one. But ground gliding kills are so fluid, and they're so entertaining, and it always feels right to do them. And they're just strong. 
It's very strong to combo fast running with ground gliding in order to get a bunch of executions. It's also very stealth friendly if you were planning an ambush or something. So ground glider, it's just an amazing skill overall and it's kind of underrated in the community in my honest opinion. And then finally for our regular bone charms, we're going to have spirit. This is going to make our mana elixirs much more effective. Having all the ranks of this is still necessary to get its full effect. And it's really, really nice because, again, we have such high mana cost. If we use maybe one or two of our abilities, like maybe once or twice, our mana gauge is completely gone. Having spirited is going to make mana potions very, very cost effective. So moving into our black bone charms, we have leech cuts. That's really the only black bone charm you should ever want to have, simply due to the fact that getting melee kills is going to increase our health with every kill. It's just so fantastic for open combat. I can't stress that enough, especially if you're going to use that sword. You're getting kills with a sword, you have basically unlimited health, and this build decimates with the sword because we're going to cut through our enemies like butter with our lightsaber sword. It's going to be epic. And then moving into corrupt bone charms, we have power slash, which is going to reduce our swing speed, but that will be made up for with whirlwind previously mentioned and it's going to increase our power this is going to make our lightsaber sword feel a bit heavier but also have a lot more impact and i like this combination for that reason i don't like having an absurdly fast melee swing speed it just feels weird it's like my character is holding like a, a very light stick as opposed to a weapon that has weight to it it's very unimmersive to me it's, i'm not the biggest fan of it and then, of course, we're going to be picking up one of my new favorite bone charms for open combat, and that Shivering Silhouette. It makes enemies miss projectiles way more often, and it is extremely noticeable, especially compared to Unsteady Hand, its counterpart in the um, regular bone charms. You can stack these if you want. Like, like for example, if you don't have Void Favor, you could probably throw Unsteady Hand and, you know, combo those two. But I don't even think it's necessary due to the fact that we have Reflect on our Abilities tree. It, it, it just really doesn't seem all that necessary. It might be counterintuitive in some um, basis. But the reason I like to keep Shivering Silhouette on here in the first place is because when you do get surrounded 360 degrees, it can save you from a lot of shit. Like, Shivering Silhouette is still really, really powerful, and that's why I put it on this list. Anyways, guys, that's all for the bone charms. I'm just going to get straight into the verdict, and then we'll, pi we'll piss a off. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the verdict, where I kind of talk about playing as this play style, the way I got these clips. Did I enjoy myself? And we're going to slap a verdict on it. I'm just going to let you know how I feel about the build personally, who I think the build is for. Enough thesis nonsense. Let's jump into it. So the way the playstyle works is you're going to have your sword as your lightsaber. You're going to make that really strong, but not like super fast swingy, so it feels like a heavier lightsaber. Hence the power slash and whirlwind combo. And then we're going to have in the offhand all of our supernatural powers that are going to basically make up as Jedi powers. So you have Mesmerize as your Jedi mind trick. You have Force Pull, which is far reach. And then you have basically a force push as um, wind blast. I almost called it whirlwind, my god. <laughs> so, having all of this in conjunction with itself and then using it in an open combat setting, it's very effective, but in my honest opinion, this build is not that fun, especially as someone who is a veteran of this game. The reason being because, in all honesty, Corvo's powers, like, just having Wind Blast makes this build feel overpowered. It's just, it's just an absurd ability. At the base rank, you knock everyone down and can get instant kills, especially if you're really fast, you know, with the agility perks. And at its max rank, you just decimate everything. The fact that there's a more powerful version of Wind Blast makes no sense to me. Like, you can get a... a bone charm called void winds and make this even more powerful why it's already a god tier perk it's obscenely powerful it just wipes out a room and a mob of enemies like it's so ridiculous to the point where if i wanted to i can just alert every enemy in the vicinity run into a linear hallway wait for them to enter the hallway angle myself to where everyone hits the wall and then press l2 and win it's 
not fun, in all honesty. But if you're a fan of the Star Wars theme, you're probably going to get some kicks out of the build. Or if you're into the overpowered power fantasy, this is definitely your cup of tea. But for me, for me as someone who's played this game like an ungodly amount, it's not fun at all to just be obscenely overpowered. Like, you can take a power fantasy too far, and I feel like this is what this build is, but hey, some people, especially people who might not be as in tune with the game as me, would probably get a kick out of this build for uh, because of its overpowered nature. So guys, that's really it on my verdict for the Sith build. I must keep calling it the Jedi build, because that's what some of my um, clips are called. <laughs> I need to stop that. And before I get out of here, guys, I want to thank my community. Thank you so much, Gamer Saga, for giving me the premise of this build. I'm surprised I can't come up with some of the stuff on my own. Then again, I'm not super into sci-fi or anything. But I do like me some sci-fi. And thank you to the guys who put your hands in this build to help shape it into what it was. Like, just as a frame of reference, calling it the Sith build was someone else's idea. Using Far Reach as Force Pull, believe it or not, was someone else's idea. I didn't initially think to do it. Like, that's how detached I was from Dishonored at the time. Like, just not even playing the game enough to where I would, you know, think to have a force pull. Like, I forgot what Jedis could do. I forgot what Dishonored could do. And my community thankfully reminded me. And I love you guys. You guys are the fucking best. So anyways, guys, before I get out of here, make sure to leave a comment, like, subscribe. Join the orchestra of gaming. We're having a good time. We're a small community. If you post something in the comment section, it's very likely I will read it because the community is nice and small right now. And, you know, hopefully we can make this into something better. And I'll be able to do more videos and such. And I'm enjoying the channel. I'm posting more frequently. I feel like things are looking kind of up for me just as a creator. I know that my views aren't high. That's not the point. The point is, is that I'm having fun making this. And... My gosh, thank you guys so much for encouraging me in the comment section with that update video. I cannot tell you how much that meant to me. Like, it caused me to, to finish this. And it really pushed me as a creator. And I need that. I need that extra motivation sometimes. Because you know how life is. You know how life can get you down. So, anyways, thank you all to my community who, who threw something into this build. Who helped shape it into what it is. And, oh my gosh. I just want to. I just want to hug everyone. I'm so emotional, but but for real, I had a great time. This is Violent Games signing off. Join the fucking orchestra. Become a man. Do it. Hit the subscribe button. Do it, Anakin. I don't want to do it. Do it.